Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial in which I'm going to show you how you can use the native Ajax object to send and receive data in JavaScript. And I'll be showing you how you can make all four types of requests, a get request to get data, a post request to send data, a put request to update data, and a delete request to delete it. So the term Ajax stands for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Now something to get out of the way at the beginning is that the XML part of this term doesn't really make sense anymore. So XML is a way that you can store data in string format. These days we're largely dealing with JSON data, so the XML bit has become somewhat redundant. So it actually makes a lot more sense if you just ignore the XML part of this term and you think of Ajax as a way of making HTTP requests to send and receive data. So let's begin by making a get request for data using Ajax. So the way that you start making a request using Ajax is always the same. You call upon the native XML HTTP request object. It's got the XML part in there. As I mentioned, you should just ignore that. And what you want to do is to create a new instance of an object of that type. And the way that you do that, I'll just delete this bit down here, is to use the new operator before this object. So this is a special type of object. It's an object constructor, which when you call it, will create a new object of its type. So I'm going to save this in a variable called rec. Some people call this XHR, but I prefer using the request term. You can use whatever you want. It won't make any difference to the way the request works. So now we've created a new Ajax object that we can use to construct a HTTP request. But at the moment, we haven't specified where that request is going, what type of request it is. So that's what we need to do next. So on the Ajax object I just created, I call the open method. And inside the parentheses, I pass in two bits of information. The first one is the type of request. In this case, it's a get request. And in the second position, I type in the URL endpoint from which I'm getting the data. So in this case, I'm going to be getting data from a test API endpoint from recres.in. So this API has been created for testing purposes and it allows you to work with fake user data. So if you scroll down, you can see the type of requests that you can make to this API. So we're gonna start with a get request. So if we make a get request here to get a list of users, we need to make the request to forward slash API forward slash users. Now in the specific example given here, there's a query added for page two. I'm not going to include that in the request. Now, if the request is successful, then it's telling me it will give me a response code of 200 and I'll get back a data object like this one that is in JSON format. So returning to my code, I'm going to make my HTTP request to that endpoint. So it's rec res in forward slash API, forward slash users. Okay, so now we've configured the request, what type of request it is, and the endpoint. We can actually send off the request now by calling the send method on the request object. Now I can check if the request was successful by heading over to the browser and opening the developer tools. And inside there, navigating to the network tab. Now when I refresh the page, you'll see the resources that are loaded when I refresh the page. So the HTML document is where I'm writing this JavaScript. So obviously this is being loaded. You also see that there's this users object that is an object of type, let me get rid of that a second, of type XHR. So this stands for XML HTTP request. You can see that the status code here is 200. If I click on the object, you can see a little bit more information about it. So it's to the endpoint that we specified. It's a get request. The status code is 200, meaning it was successful. Now, if I click on the response tab here, so this is the payload in JSON string format. If we have a look along, you can see the ID and email of the first user, also the first name, last name, and URL of an avatar for that user and then the second user ID and email and so on. So we know this request was successful and we got the data back as expected. What we haven't done yet 
is written the code in JavaScript so we can make the data available to us there. So what you need to do is to add an event listener to the Ajax object that you have created. So I'll do that now. And you're listening out for a load event. So the load event occurs when the request has been made and a response has come back. At that point, you'll be able to handle the response. So you can do that in this function here, which is going to fire on the load event. So the data that has been sent to you it is available on a property on the Ajax object called response text. So what I'm going to do is log that to the console so you can see it. So let's check everything's working. I'll refresh. So you'll see that we have the data here, but it's actually in JSON string format. What we want is to convert that to a JavaScript object that we can query in our script. So the way that you can do that is by using a native object in JavaScript called JSON, and you want to call the pass method on it. So that's going to convert this JSON string to a JavaScript object. So if I make the request again, so this is now a JavaScript object and the data is accessible via the data property. Inside there is an array of objects, each object corresponding to one of the users. So you have the ID and the email, first name, last name, and avatar of each user. So if I wanted to access the data for the first user, what I could do in my code is, well, what I would first of all do is store the result of this passing in an object, I'll call that res, and then the console log, and then the console log, I'm going to log data. So for the first user, I will get back the object. So if I wanted to get the values of these properties, I could do so using dot notation. So for the ID of the first user, just dot ID, and I'll also get the email. So that's the way that I can access the data. So the ID for the first user is one, and this is the email for the first user. So this was a successful request, but not all of them are. So we would usually want to add error handling to check if something went wrong. So the way that you do that is you check for values on the Ajax object. So the first one is status. So this is the status code. So from the documentation, we know that if, if the request was successful, then it will turn a status code of 200. And the second thing we need to check for is the ready state. So if everything is complete, the value of ready state should be four. Okay, so we're checking if everything is complete. If so, then we want to do exactly the same as we just did before. So if I run this, there should be no difference between this and the request we just made. We're getting the same data back. But in case the request is not successful, you will want to add some error handling. Now, if you want to throw a hard error, so execution of the code stops completely, if the request is unsuccessful, then you say throw new error. And you type in a message here, so bad request. Now, if something goes wrong with the request, so for example, if the endpoint is not correct, and I try the request again, you see now that we get this uncaught error, bad request. And you can see that we also got a 404 error message back from the server. So a status code of 404 means resource not found. And of course, that was the case in this example because the endpoint doesn't exist on the server. Now, if you don't want to stop code execution altogether, then instead of throwing an error here, you might want to just log a message to the console. So you can say console.error. So this would still have read error messaging, but it wouldn't stop code execution. So it's really up to you which one you want to go for, depends upon your needs. Okay, so let's move on now to making a post request using Ajax. So I'm going to comment all of this out and we'll scroll down here. So as I mentioned, an Ajax request, it always starts in the same way. You create a new Ajax object, a new instance of it, and save it in a variable. Now again, 
we're going to call the open method. But this time we're going to pass in some different information in here. So this time we want to make a post request and we also need to check to see what kind of endpoint we need to send a post request to. So we need to check the documentation for the API to see what endpoint is supported for a post request. So post is titled create. So to create a new user, we make a request forward slash API forward slash users, and it's expecting data in this format. So this is a JSON string. And if the request was successful and we created a new user on the server, then we'll get a response code back of 201. And we're actually going to get an object back ourselves. That's also again in JSON format, giving us some data, showing us what type of user we've created, including a created at timestamp. So back in our code, I'm going to specify that endpoint. And it's forward slash API forward slash users. Now you also send a post request by calling the send method, but this time we want to send a payload as well. Remember, we've got to send some data to the server to create a new user. So I need to, in here, enter some data that is in JSON format. Now it's not very common to enter it directly. What I'm going to do above is create a JavaScript object and then convert this to JSON. So I'm going to store this object in a variable called new user. And I'll just create a simple user. The name can be Batman. And the sidekick can be Robin. Now, if I were to pass in this object as the payload of the post request, so I specify the payload inside send. So this wouldn't work because this is a JavaScript object, new user, and what we need is a JSON format string. Now you can easily convert a JavaScript object to a JSON string using a native method called json.stringify. So you need to wrap the JavaScript object in the parentheses and that's going to convert it to a JSON string and that is now going to be the payload. Now there's one more line of code that you need to include for a post request specifically and that is set request header. Now the first bit of information you need to pass in here is content type. So this is always the same. You're going to want to set a content type header to let the server know what type of data you are sending. And then in the second position, you want to enter the MIME type for the data you are sending. So a MIME type is just a universally understood way of describing data. So for example, text forward slash plane. Um, there's lots of other ways that you can describe data, image forward slash BMP. Also, if you're sending audio or video, you've got some for those. In this case, we're going to be using application forward slash JSON. But if you're sending data of a different type, then you'd want to come here and check the MIME type that is appropriate in your case. So in this case, it's application forward slash JSON. Now for handling the response, I'm going to simply take the event listener that I added in the get request and copy and paste it down here because it's working in exactly the same way apart from a couple of small changes which we'll make in a moment. So I'll uncomment this. Okay. So the first thing that needs to change is the status code we're checking for because according to the documentation, if the request is successful, then we'll receive a 201 code back. So I want to change what we're logging to the console here because unlike with the list of users, we're getting some information about the new user we're creating. So I'm still passing using json.pass the response text I get back. So from a JSON object to a JavaScript object, storing it in res and then logging it to the console. So let's make that request now head over to the browser and you see now the response from the server. I get the name Batman sidekick Robin. It's got an ID of 55 and it also has this created at timestamp. So this is what we were expecting back according to the documentation. So that is a successful post request. Now let's talk about how you would make a put request 
which is very similar except you're updating data. You're still posting data to the server, but you're saying, okay, if the data already exists, then it should be overwritten. So I'm going to take the title put and put it under the post request because these types of requests are very similar in terms of how you structure them. So we're going to be sending a user again and I need to check the documentation to see what is expected. So to update a user entry, I send an object with the user data. So it's going to overwrite any existing user data for that user. I'm going to get a response code of 200 back and I'm also going to see the new user data with an updated at timestamp. So now in my request, I'll make the necessary modifications. So I have my new user here. I'm making my request. It's not a post request, this time it's a put request. Also in the documentation, it tells me that I have to select a certain user to update. So I can't just post to forward slash users because this contains all users. I have to select the ID of a particular user. So the endpoint, I'm going to update the information for user two. I still want to set the request header because I'm still sending data. The status code now is 200. I'm still getting a response text back, so I still want to handle it in the same way. And I'm stringifying in the payload the JavaScript object I created. So hopefully this is all working fine. We didn't have to make too many changes over the post request. So now we get name Batman sidekick Robin updated at. So that is a successful put request. So let's now move on to our final type of request, which is a delete request. So I'm going to comment out our put request. And you're probably used to it by now. The way that we create a new request, call the XML HTTP request object and save the return value in a variable. Then it's rec open. And this type of request is delete. Now we have to refer to the documentation to see what we should do for a delete request, what the server is expecting and what it tells us it will send back. So the URL endpoint, it has to be for a specific user again. So I'll use user two. And if it's successful, it's going to send a response code back of 204. So I need to modify my result handling to check for a 204 value. So the endpoint is recres.in forward slash API forward slash users two. Now there's no payload this time because I'm just deleting an entry. So I don't have to put anything in the parentheses in send this time. Now I'm going to copy the result handling from the last request that was made. So the put request, this goes here and I get rid of the comments. Don't need those. Now the status code I'm looking out for is 204 now. And the result handling is actually going to be quite different because according to the documentation, I'm not going to get back any kind of response text. If you look at the documentation here, it's telling me that I'm gonna get nothing back, but I will know if it was successful by the response code. This means that there's no value in accessing the response text property on the request. Instead, it makes more sense for me to just log a message to the console saying request successful. And I can still throw an error in case it was a bad request. So let's check whether this was successful. I'll refresh now, get a request successful message back, meaning that the response code was 204, the user with the ID two was successfully deleted. So that's how you can make all four types of HTTP request using Ajax. Now, one of the nice things about Ajax is if that you're sending or receiving a payload, you can call methods on the request object to get an update about how that's going and update a progress bar in the UI. So if you're interested in that, I have a tutorial on how to create and upload progress bar that should be appearing on screen right now. But that is it for this tutorial on the types of requests you can make with Ajax. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below.